grace and peace be unto you all. It's such a wonderful privilege and an honor to be able to bring forth the word of God on today. He is an amazing God and his word is life. It's refreshing and it is needed in these times. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. To God be the glory for the things He has done with His love. to say a little bit of that it it just dropped in my spirit earlier today so i wanted to share that with you all to god be the glory for all the things that he has done to god be the glory for who he is for being an awesome god he is the mate the amazing god and i am so blessed and so happy and elated that he chose me to be a part of this race i can't tell you the relief it is to know that God has the control. It is such a relief to know that our steps are ordered by the word if you trust him, if you trust him. So today we're going to talk about God's word today. Please join me as we go to God in prayer. Mighty God, King of all kings and the Lord of all lords, to the gracious and wonderful God, our Redeemer, our Savior, to our Emmanuel, you are God who are with us. To our great Jehovah, you are the Lord. You are the Elohim. You are El Shaddai. You are Master and Ruler. Thank you so much for offering this time to be able to minister to those that will listen to this message, Lord, as it has truly ministered to me. Father, I pray that I am pleasing in my speech and in what you reminded me and taught me on this day, Father God, and throughout this week. Father, thank you so much for your word that is life, your word that is breath, your word that is refreshing. It's a, it cleanses us. And I thank you, Lord God. Thank you for those who are listening. It is my prayer that your word will encourage those who are downhearted, that your word will cuts in on the left and cuts in on the right, that your word, Father God, will prick our hearts, that we may do what you have called us to do, that we will not only be hearers only, but doers as well. I pray, Father, that if someone does not know you as their personal Lord and Savior, that they will desire and take action to cause you, or to not cause you, Father, but to ask you to be their Lord and their Savior their life on this day, for you are so worthy of all praise, and your way is the best way, and a wonderful way. Thank you so much for this day. Thank you for you. I give you praise, and I give you glory. In Christ Jesus' name, amen. So please join me as I take our text today from Matthew chapter 8, verses 5, 6, 7, 8, and 13. Once again, Verses 5, 6, 7, 8, and 13 of Matthew chapter 8. I will be reading the King James Version. And it reads as thus. And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, or some people say Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion, beseeching him, and saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home sick of the palsy grievously tormented and Jesus saith unto him I will come and heal him 
The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only and my servant will be healed and my servant shall be healed. Skip over to verse 13. It says, and Jesus said unto the centurion, go thy way and as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed in the self same hour. It's a lot of good stuff in those verses there. So let's begin. We want to talk about activating God's word in our life. But first, we have to realize what is God's word? God's word is what we call the Bible. 66 books, about 40 authors, written over a span of 1,500 years. 40 different authors. Different authors, different backgrounds. Now, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17, uh, Paul lets us know that this, these scriptures were not just written by like they weren't just written by the men like, oh, I just feel like writing. No, these were, this was God breathed, God inspired. He inspired, he breathed, and he, um, he led them to write these words. His, not these, not just these words, but his words, his words, his communication to humanity. Uh, if you want to reference that, once again, that is Second Timothy chapter 3. Verses 16 and 17. Also, you can look at uh, 2 Peter verses, uh, chapter 1, rather, verses 19 through 20. So all scripture is God breathed, inspired by the Holy Spirit. So they didn't just write it. This is actually God's words. This is the very word of God to humanity. The written word. Or in the Greek, it is called logos. So logos means the written word word of God. Okay. Logos is the constant written word of God. It helps us to learn about God, his ways, and his plan for mankind. Uh, without God's word, we wouldn't know who God is, nor his ways. We'd have to speculate and wonder. The Bible is God's mean of getting his word to us. Okay, that is the logos word. That is the written word. So it is it is it is very important to know that we can know who God is. We don't have to just wish upon a star or I don't know who God is or what he wants me to do. Well, have you turned to his word? Have you sat down and and read and not just read, but meditate. And not even just meditate, but write down what God says in his word. A lot of people call it Bible journaling, um, your study time. Second Timothy, let me make sure I'm saying this correctly. Um, Second Timothy chapter 2 and 15, if you want to turn there. Because you also, we have to make sure that we're saying what is right too in God's word. I just want to make sure I'm saying it. Second Timothy, the correct way. Okay. Um, yes. Second Timothy 2 and 15. Study to show thyself approved um, unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay. So if God's, if the, if, if the word of God, the logos, the, the written word of God is the word of God, it is truth. So what we're reading is God's true word, his truth. And God cannot lie. So the word of God is the way that God would have us to live. But we wouldn't know that unless we are reading his written word of God. Okay. Now follow me. Let's, let's turn back to Matthew chapter 8. This will make a little, I hope this is making sense, but I want to put it all together. And what does this have to do with activating God's word? What does this have to do with the centurion? Okay, let's, let's, I'm glad you asked, or I'm glad you're thinking about that. Okay. 
So let's go to, chap to, to chapter 8 uh, of Matthew, verse 5. Let's break this down. And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum or Capernaum, um, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him. Okay, pause right there. A centurion came unto him beseeching him. I found that to be very interesting because when we are in a predicament or when we are in some type of trial or tribulation, we are distressed. Who do we call on? Who do we go to? Amazingly, the centurion, who is a Gentile, knew who to go to. He, be, he besought him. He, he started to beseech him. Okay. He he was, he came to him begging him, turn to, uh, what well, in your own time, look up Psalms 107, verse 6, 13, and 19 say the same thing. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distresses. But they wouldn't know what to do had they not heard about the written word or heard about God. The centurion wouldn't know what to do had he not heard who God was or the written word or seen, um, maybe even seen some of the things that Christ Jesus has done. Those of us, first, let me break it down. Those of us who are believers, who know who to go to when we are in distress, we know to go and read God's word, the logos. Those who are, um, those who do not know who Christ and if they're going through something and if they know who you are and they believe you to be a child of the living God, a follower of Christ, they will ask you, can you pray for me? I know myself, I like to encourage my staff at my workplace. And a lot of times I will most definitely, actually every time I will send a scripture and explain it to them because I want them to know the written word of God. Okay, so the centurion went to the written word of God. Remember John chapter 1, verse 1. Uh, uh, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Logos, he is the written word. Okay, let's go to verse 6. Follow me, follow me. Remember, the centurion went to the written word, the Lord. He went to him, okay? And saying, this is the centurion, and saying, Lord... My servant lieth at home sick of the palsy and grievously tormented. I found it very interesting that this Roman uh, centurion, this Gentile, not an Israelite, but somebody outside of the Israelites race, which is what a Gentile is. I'm a, and actually I'm a, a naturally speaking, I'm a Gentile. Spiritually speaking, I'm a spiritual Israelite. Okay, that, that's, a, that's a whole nother lesson right there. So I, I thought it interesting that this Gentile who, whom a lot of, uh, uh, you know, as you're reading the Bible, the Gentiles had a whole nother way of praising their little G-O-D. They didn't, they didn't praise God. They didn't uh, accept who God was. They, they didn't believe in him. They just heard about the great things he's done. But here we have this Gentile, this Roman centurion who knew who has uh, who came to Christ and he called him Lord. So I looked up, you know, Lord, lowercase L O R D and the meaning of it. And of course I know, but you know, for emphasis and just to, to really get it into our, um, to really think about it. Lord means the, he, um, somebody who is someone having power, authority, master or ruler. Okay. That's what the little, L-O-R-D means, this is capital L-O-R-D, meaning the ultimate ruler, the ultimate authority. He has the ultimate power. So the centurion, who in his own right is like a lowercase L-O-R-D, recognized whom the ultimate power is with Christ Jesus, okay? So once again, the Roman soldier went to the Lord, the, the Lord, the logos, the written word. Why? Because I cannot imagine him being in um uh, in 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 this city and not knowing who and not having not knowing who Christ was and not even um 
hearing about the mighty and wonderful works that he has done. Okay, which is why he went to him. Let's use our imagination there. Okay, so this so this Gentile, once again, recognized who the written word was. Okay, so he had, he, he, he recognized that. Okay, now, Jesus, and as sweet as he is, and as wonderful and gentle and as as powerful as he is verse 7 says and jesus saith unto him i will come and heal him note note this he didn't say because you are a gentile no because you are not an israelite mm -mm, i'm I'm not going to come no no his love for humanity goes beyond all knowledge his love for every culture, male, female, it goes beyond anything that we've ever known. He came to save that which was lost. And in the process, he did works to validate his word, to validate who he was. And it didn't have to. But because he, I mean, we're talking about the creator of the universe. Let me bring it back. Let me bring it back. So Jesus said, I will come and heal him. You know, like that's what Jesus said. But here's something. The centurion says this to Jesus. He told Jesus. I, I'm sorry, I had to turn my page. He told Jesus. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only and my servants shall be healed. But speak the word only. So the centurion went to the written word, logos, and was expecting the rhema word. Rhema word is another Greek. Uh, 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 Rhema is, is another Greek translation, rather, for spoken word. Okay? Okay? Mm -hmm. Remember, logos is the written word. Rhema is the spoken word. Rhema is the instant personal speaking of God to us. When God speaks his written word, his logos word, right into your situation it becomes then the rhema uh, the rhema word it activates the rhema word is personal the rhema word is just what you need right when you need it spoken from god by god to you glory to god so the centurion knew that all christ had to do was speak the word but there, there's some things here that the centurion did that maybe we've missed. One, the centurion recognized who God was. He recognized who the, the Lord was. He was humble, a broken and a contrite spirit. Uh, he, God will, a broken heart and a contrite spirit. God will not despise. All come unto me, all ye who are laden and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. The centurion enacted, he, he acted out both of these scriptures. Mm hmm Okay. So he recognized who the Lord was. He was humble and he came unto him and he was in distress. And then the centurion had faith. The centurion then exercised his faith. How? Just by telling him, speak the word. I'm not worthy that you should even come under my roof. I know I'm a Gentile and I know what Israelites um, could be thinking that you would come under my roof. I don't even want to put you in that place, Jesus. I want you just to speak the word. I believe, I have faith. I believe that, that what you say, it is law. It is true. It is the truth. It is what is going to happen. Speak the word and I know he'll be healed. So what is that saying to us? One, we need to recognize who Christ is, 
We need to come to him with an humble heart. With And even if you come to him broken, he is the best person to come to broken because he will mend and he will fix whatever it is that is going on in your heart and in your life. So be humble. Recognize who he is. And then have faith. What is faith? Now the scripture in uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Or what one of my favorite uh, 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 pastors says, Faith is believing that God is telling the truth. Faith is knowing that God is telling the truth. Listen, there is God's word and there everybody else's word. And if God is not a lie, guess what? Everybody else is. There's God's way and then there's everybody else's way. And God's way is truly the only way. No matter what anybody else says, God's way is the only way. It's the truth and the life. Christ Jesus. Okay? So let's get back to this. But Okay, today, so how are you, how are we, Activating God's word. Okay, I'm glad you asked. I'm glad you asked about that. The more we read God's word, the more we study God's word and write it down, the more his word in Psalms uh, chapter uh, 119 verse 11, his word will be hidden in our heart. And as we are going through situations, God will speak that rhema word to you right in the midst of what you're going through. Okay. And here's another way. And here's, here, here's another example. The more we read God's word and spend time in his word, the more, the more we'll know who God is. And then we'll, the more we'll know his way. And then when we pray, we can pray his word. And we have faith because we've seen how he has brought us through that and helped us in this. And as we are praying his word, God will respond to his word because it is his word. It's like, it's, it's, I've heard so many times we say we remind God of his word. It is not that he forgets, but do you remember what he said? Mm-hmm. It's it's like when a parent gives the child directives, gives the child instructions, or or is teaching that child, and that child goes wayward and does and makes a bad choice. Okay, and so a, a, a lot of time in parenting, what what parents will do, or even this is I'm not a parent, but on my job when I have to talk or redirect a student, I will remind them by asking them, well, what did I say? What are the values or what are the, what is it that we just talked about? And a lot of times, you know, it's, it's, it's in that child when they repeat to you what you just said. Okay. They just decided to do their own thing. So when we're praying, we are repeating what God has already told us. And in God's word is life. Glory to God. And in God's word is refreshing. Ref- and this is not a, a real word, but it's refreshness. It's just this that's how I feel. Like he refreshes my spirit. He refreshes our soul. He re- he reminds me of what he said, what he's going to do, and the destiny he has placed over my life. And there's a quickening that happens um within us, within me, or within the uh, child of God. To know that, wait a minute, I wanted to give up, but I remember that God said the race is not given to the swift nor the strong, but to those that endure, but you have to endure to the end. Or I, I remember when when God, when there's something that comes your way and you just read uh, about being more than a conqueror, and then the next thing you know, like when you're going to work or you, you have some type of um, a trial that is in your way or mountain that is in your way. You can re- remember God will speak that rhema word to you and you can, after he speaks it to you, 
You can speak it to your situation. That's how we activate the word of the living God. When we read his word, he reminds us what he says, the rhema word. He speaks it to us. And then we take what he has told us and we speak to that situation. You speak to that that co-worker, or you encourage that person who is downtrodden. That is how we activate the word of God, the written word, which is vital, the logos word, uh, God's written word to humanity. And then his rhema word is God's spoken instant word to your situation. Now, remember this, God will never speak to you, um, uh, speak something to you rather that is not in accordance to his word, but we won't know what his word says unless we read it. We can't activate God's word unless you spend time with him. We won't know God's way unless we read his word. You won't know how to pray or, to, to, or what words to pray. Our, our prayer life won't be it won't be as as conducive or 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 as mature as it could be if we don't read God's word and activate God's word and allow his rhema word which is his spoken word to us in our very in our very lives remember the rhema word is God's logos word personalized just for you and speak spoken sp spoken right into your situation. And the how, how this is how we activate it. I, I'm reminded of I'm reminded of baking soda and vinegar. So the vinegar, I, I could say it's it's like the vinegar is like you. It's like us. It's just you know, it's just like us. We're you know we're there. We're we're, it's just us and it's like we're reading God's word and reading God's word is great and that's what we have to do we need to do the baking soda it's like God's word okay and we pour it into the vinegar and what happens whoosh it explodes it's like a, it's and, it, and it, it's really cool it's like an, uh, an explosion. Well, not an explosion, but it like bubbles up and boils over, uh, bubbles up and boils out. And next thing you know, it's overflowing. That is God's rhema's word. That His rhema word, that's what he does. He activates. To activate God's word in our life is to read his word. After you read his word, remember, meditate, journal it down, write it on your heart, write it on. I have, I have little note cards over my house to remind me of what God said because we need to know. But then apply God's word to your life. And then in those situations, God will speak that word that you need to hear right at the moment you need to hear it. Apply what God is saying to your life. Remember, when we're in the will of God, when we, we our everyday lives, excuse me, our everyday lives need to make sure it is what God has told us to do. In other words, we need to make sure we are living our lives through Christ and through his word. What does God say about marriage? It's in his word. What does God say about uh, uh, children and obe obeying? It is in his word. What does God say about good stewardship? And see, that just goes, there's a list of a lot of things. Do it God's way. When we learn to do it God's way and stop trying to figure out our own way, you'll see how much you'll see how much better uh, your life will be, and how much more peace you'll have. When you learn, like, oh, you, what does God say about managing money? What does God say about being uh, helping those helping the poor? What does God say about anger? What does God say about gossiping? Yes, to many, it's going to sound like, oh, you a holy roller. Okay. I'm going to do it God's way because when we do it God's way, we'll experience that peace. We'll experience that abundant life, that abundant joy that he is talking about. We will experience that overcoming more than a conqueror. I am the head and not the tail, power and lifestyle. Glory to God.
Glory to God. Verse 13. And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way. And as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed in that self same hour. This servant believed God so much. He was humble. He recognized who he was. He activated his faith. He didn't just say, oh man, I need somebody to pray for me. I just really wish the Lord would pray. No, he went to the Lord. Lord, I'm telling you, I'm casting my care upon you. I, I I need you to do this for me. God says, Jesus says, yeah, okay, I'll do it, Lord. You know what, Father? I'm not worthy. But you are awesome. You are the ultimate ruler. I understand that you are the supreme Kai. You are the supreme ruler and, and, and power. Overall, I recognize, I recognize that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. I recognize that he is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. I recognize that I have to go through him to get to you. I recognize that, Father. And I ask you to please heal my son. Touch, touch my family. I believe that you can do it. I believe that you will do it. Because your word said you would. And your, your faith, our faith, believing that God is telling the truth, will make you whole. Brothers and sisters in Christ, and men and women, boys and girls who may look at this, remember, activating the word of God. Applying means to apply his word to your life. It means yes. Yes. Quote those scriptures over whatever it is that is ailing you. But you have to read his written word. And after we read his written word and take that time in his written word, Remember, God will speak his rhema word to you. And that rhema word that he speaks to you, you speak to your situation. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And believe. Trust God. You know he'll do it. He may not do it right then. Now, in this instance, in this instant, it said within the self-same hour. It could have been, I'm just going to pick a random hour. It could have been 1030. It could have been 1045. It could have been 1059, but it was in that hour. Lady Hilda. There are times when God will deliver. Boom. Just like that. There are times when God will, there is a course, there's a process. But God knows just what he's doing. Activate God's word in your life. Speak over what God has said to you. If you don't know what God has said to you, get in his word. Get quiet time. And listen. Write down scripture. Write it down. And then, here's a good one. Who was God talking to? What did he mean? When did he say it? What, what was the time period? What was the era that he said it? Why did he say that? How did he do it? Where am I in my walk? How can he apply? How can I apply this to my life? Oh, he'll show you. He'll show you. How do I know? Because I'm a living witness. I am a living witness. If you don't know who Christ is, is your personal Savior. I beseech you. Please surrender your heart to the Lord. And how do you do that? You don't have to be in church to do it. You don't have to be all sanctified and all, all get deep with the Lord. Lord God, oh, I need thee, Jesus. I mean, that's all that's all well and fine if that is your, if that's you. But all you have to do is just believe and have faith and confess. Believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that he died and that he rose again from the grave and then ask him Lord I want you to be Lord over my life please help me to live for you 
in Jesus name. And there you have it. Welcome to the family of Christ. Now, you got to get into his word. But where do I start, Minister Tanae? Hey, Genesis chapter 1. We can start right at Genesis chapter 1. Where it says, in the beginning, God. That right there will preach by itself. He was there in the beginning. He is here right now. He will always be. He is omniscient. He is omnipresent. Omniscient means he is all powerful. Omnipresent means he is everywhere. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the beginning and the end. He is A to Z and everything in between. Start at chapter 1 in Genesis. Start at Matthew chapter 1. And read the, you can read the genealogy of Christ. And see his lineage of the people he came through. Wow. It's amazing how God will use anybody if they are willing and wanting him to use them. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for taking this time. Remember, get in his word. Get in his word. Let him speak to you through his word. This is, this is his word. Remember, do not add. Do not take away from his word. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 2. And then Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse 32. Revelation chapter 8, chapter 22, verses 18 through 19. Do not add. Not take away from his word. And I want to tell you why. Let me tell you something. Think about this. When God, when we say, rather, excuse me, when when we tell somebody something, how do you feel when they change everything you just said? And it causes you to look like a liar. And it causes you to look like you are boasting about something. Remember, I, I, I know one thing I've learned is to write things down. Especially when talking with, you know, parents or whatever, whoever I'm talking with, or general public, put it in writing, send it in an email. That way, you got that written word, so you can remind them, remind them of whatever they need to be reminded right then. That Rama word. God is awesome, and His word is wonderful. His word is is is, is life breathing. It is water. It's like a living water, a fountain of water that cleanses us. Thank you so much. May the Lord God be with you. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.